Good morning. It's a beautiful Tuesday morning and we are welcoming you to our flagship program right here on ABS TV. Good morning, Anambra. My name is Chidima Orangwa. Of course, today we are starting the show with the stories trending on the national delis. And we also have a guest with us this morning that will help us to review the papers. But you get to meet him after this short break. Stay with us. All right, you're welcome back to the show. Our guest this morning is uh, Tony Wakile. Tony is a public affairs analyst. Good morning, Tony. Welcome. Uh, uh, good morning, and welcome. Good morning, and brothers. Let's reason together, please. All right, uh, quickly, let's start uh, with the stories uh, in front of the Daily Sun newspaper this morning. Uh, the big story there. INEC fears election shift over insecurity, raises the alarm as safety challenges rises. That's the banner headline. Then the, the, on top of that, the paper, that's the Daily Sun. One dead, one dead policeman shot as Yoruba nation rally turns bloody in Lagos. Articles campaign council dismisses uh, allegations of money laundering. Then down there, Wiki explains anger with a PDP, uh, says blackmail won't stop him from demanding justice and uh, fairness, uh, condemns NDC 500 billion naira budget. I will be responsible as president, will be pledges. Other stories there, fuel importation to end by 2024. Federal government buys 20 to 30% equity in four modular refineries. Uh, terrorist kills cause of security personnel in Kaduna as uh, six victims of a train attack are rescued. Appeal court, uh, President warns election tribunals members uh, vows to deal with anyone found wanting. Federal government of load of uh, three industrial parks earmarks 3.2 billion naira for first phase. Naseni Buari campaigns for Tinibu in Adamawa says uh, Binani's election as governor will open doors for women. All right, Tony, these are the stories trending in front of the Daily Sun this morning. So let's start with the big story. Uh, what the INEC are saying, uh, they are fearing that the election might be shifted because of insecurity in the country. Yeah, it's a, it's a thing to, it's something to worry about. Because if you get, uh, if you listen to the details, uh, this INEC office is born here, yeah? mm. born there, but you know. So what is the purpose? I mean, uh, it's, it's an indirect way of trying to truncate the progress so far made in the areas of uh, uh, popular uh, democracy. Mm. And uh, there should be a solution. I, I would suggest that um, the security around those offices be beefed up. Huh? Be beefed up and then um, they should also find a way of examining who comes in and who goes out. It shouldn't just be a question of uh, anybody who wants to come in and come in. Fine. Besides also the distribution of cards. Uh, anyway, let me, not, let me limit myself to the issue. Uh, if it is because of the distribution of cards, well, they can go down to the um, uh, pooling units, local governments and all that. So as to safeguard INEC office. Otherwise, if the election is truncated, nobody knows what next. Okay. Okay, that's as, as a solution to what is happening that's to the solution. offices. Uh, okay, the they offices. should decentralize the distribution and leave the major offices yes. in where things are kept. Where things are kept. Okay. Uh, and what and you, then uh, upscale the security uh, the there. there. Okay. Yeah. What do you also have to say about Wiki and PDP in River State? Of course, <laughs> we are seeing here that he's, uh, uh, he explains anger with a PDP, saying that blackmail won't actually stop him from uh, demanding justice. Yeah, the issue is that uh, I wouldn't know, I'm not a member of the PDP. I'm 
but I wouldn't know what their internal uh, guidelines look like. Even if you have a, even if anybody, I'm not uh, taking sides with either Wike or the uh, Atikwa, mm. but the issue is every party should have its internal uh, democracy and guidelines, which I'm sure should be stated in their constitutions. And that should be followed strictly. And if there's any grievance, then you still follow the channels and then make your grievances known uh, rather than uh, making an effort to thwart the entire business. PDP should be able to put itself together. I mean, it's one, it's one of the oldest, if not the oldest party mm. in the country now. So it's surprising. All right. Um, do you also, how do you also feel about the story uh, talking about uh, uh, stopping the importation of fuel by the year 2024 as the federal government buys 20 to 30 percent equity in four modular refineries? In fact, that, that, is, that, has, since, that, has, uh, that uh, has since been expected. In fact, mm. it's even coming late because uh, in Nigeria, the uh, sixth largest producer, of crude oil mm -hmm. should be exported, not importing fuel. It's surprising, and uh, the refineries that are not working, and if if those if the refineries that were there originally are no longer working, then they should be scrapped. And the modular refineries, that's a good one. And apart from the ones they are doing, they should also encourage individuals and the other investors who will be willing to invest in it in that area so that uh, Nigeria should be able to process um, what process process the percentage of uh, our fuel consumption from internal sources not uh, not exporting crude oil and then we go back to import uh, uh, the part of the produce mm. so what happens to the other uh, lines of products uh, they become waste you sell something to somebody and you now go back to buy it again and that's not business. It's, it's, uh, it's in fact, buy it at exorbitant uh, rates. Exorbitant rates, mm. and uh, I don't want to talk about the other things they're raising until maybe when it comes up. All right. Um, quickly, let's move over to the next paper under discussion this morning, and that is the Punch newspaper with the banner headline there talking about the cash limit. Customers are protest as banks begin enforcement. Uh, customers say policy will affect cash-based businesses demand fresh review. Bank ATMs dispense old notes despite CBN directive. New note scarcity persists. Scarcity, federal government orders NNPC to reduce petrol price. Gunmen demand 620 million naira ransom for abducted train passengers. Dokbesi, UK police depends probe controversy surrounds airport incident. And down there, you can see how Yoruba nation protesters converge 3 a.m. members killed. You can see that the picture of the in front page of the Punch newspaper this morning. Mm -hmm. Protesting police students block a bad road. Government governor intervened. Pastor raped my daughter for three years. Uh, this is coming from a mother. The SS director's wife orders Kano governor's candidate arrest. Okay, uh, of course. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, these are what we have in front of the Punch newspaper this morning. Uh, let's begin with uh, what is really affecting almost um, every mm -hmm. citizen of this country, talking mm -hmm. about the cash limit. Uh, a lot of people are already protesting that the new note, one, uh, it's not in full circulation yet. And talking about the cash limit, what of people that are depending on cash to, do their, to run their businesses that is going to affect them? I I, I guess that's one of the reasons why the Senate uh, we are calling for um, an ad adjournment of the enforcement uh, date. Yes. And uh, I don't know uh, where they ended the, the discussion. Because I, I knew some time ago they invited um, uh, the CBN governor. MFLA, yeah. MFLA. And um, this, had a discussion and they were asking for about six months extension. Mm, till so, June. Till June. And up till now, nothing, uh, not... Uh, well, uh, as, still, as, as, as of yesterday, they are still saying that 31st is still their deadline their for deadline. the phasing out of the old oh, notes. That's what they said. That's what it is. So the issue is that, does it mean that uh, the CBN governor has a final say? So whatever he says, 
what happens to the people who the, the woman that fries akara sells uh, the sells pure water and and other minor minor ingredients that depends daily that is their transactions are mainly done on cash on daily basis because uh, these people they move around and then if that is if this thing is enforced like that it's likely going to uh, affect the level of turnover and the moment that is done there will be a fiduciary uh, rate of inflation because scarcity of cash will now well it could enforce they make the prices of some goods um, fall but that is on a temporary basis and again so many businesses especially cash and da daily cash dependent businesses are likely going to uh, close down and also that will involve the ones being done by the youth and so what is the purpose of the uh, Exercise. Remember, you, you remember that they said that one of the reasons why they are doing this is to actually uh, uh, this make people that always like hoarding money to mm. stop that mm. uh, particular yes. uh, um, activity. Mm -hmm. Now, they are actually referring to politicians because mm -hmm. we are talking about the election that is taking place yes. to, in 20, um, February 2023. Yeah. So they said that if they make this money, if they make uh, this money scarce, and then uh, people will just have to withdraw the one that they can use for just their business uh -huh. that it will make the politician not to have so much they, wa they want yeah, to have yeah. maybe to use to buy votes or to use to coerce people to vote for them on the election day. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's one aspect of the transaction. But that one is a one-off. And again, uh, besides the politicians, there are also people whose businesses rely strictly on cash. And it's for ca cash for cash. I remember um, the uh, the representative of the cattle Fulanese were also asking for extension to enable them to offload the cash. And the issue is this: if you make this uh, cash scarce, because right now it's not even in circulation, you now if you now uh, make this in and it becomes very scarce. What of the persons whose this thing, uh, whose businesses, like I said, are dependent on daily car transactions? These people will now be starved off, and indirectly, you have created a larger frame of uh, unemployment. Because when people cannot do their transactions, they cannot earn income, they can neither buy or sell, then you create another problem. It has an indirect way of increasing the security uh, of. Uh, and making the security issue that is already in a bad situation more complex. Okay. You push more people probably into crimes, especially the youth. Mm, well said. All right. Uh, the, let's the, also... The, the, level of, uh, um, the level of banditry, prostitution, and, uh, is likely going to increase as people become desperate to get cash from any source they can. All right. Let's also look at the story of the... Um uh, kidnapped uh, passengers uh, the train uh, at uh, train station uh, train station in Edo uh, government are now demanding 620 million naira for a ransom for the adopted train passengers I uh, see part of the um, see part of the uh, uh, security issue we are having in the country the truth is that you know if you begin to say much about it, it looks as if you are trying to indict anybody. That is not an indictment. The primary function of any government at any level is security of lives and property. Once that is failed, then it means that the security system and of course whoever is on seat has failed. So the challenge is still there. Uh, to the other time it was at um, uh, Abuja area. Mm. Now it is Kaduna. now uh, Kaduna. Then from Abuja to Kaduna down to Edo State. Who knows which state next? So it's a problem. A serious problem. We discussed this thing. I pointed it out way back in February, uh, uh, February uh, 2019. That the way the security situation in this country is being handled is likely going to uh, become complex and compounded, and that is it has manifested. So, if it were uh, Oibo people 
once they know they come into a situation and they cannot handle it, they resign voluntarily and allow people with uh, people to come in with fresh ideas or alternative methods of handling it. But that is not the case here. Okay. So uh, uh, the problem is still there. It's a major one. Mm. As funny as this story may sound, I mean, the last uh, headline that I read out, uh, is it actually the right thing to do for an officer's wife to <laughs> order <laughs> for an arrest of a governor's candidate in Kano State? We are talking about DSS director's wife mm -hmm. ordering uh, for the arrest of Kano, governor's, uh, Kano State's governor candidates. It's embarrassing now because in the country, people, uh, violation of the constitution has become a common uh, issue. People begin to do whatever they like. Uh, what is the, the man who is in, the DSS man who is in charge? What is his duties? Has he now handed over his duties to the wife? And who is actually on that seat? Is it himself or the wife? Mm. It's, 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 I mean, it's part of the embarrassing things that uh, create uh, complex situations in se on security issues here. Yes. Why ordering the decision? Why don't you allow the politicians who, uh, to go and argue their cases and sort out? A few days back, if you look at the, the footnotes, you see where it will be and uh, that. We have been interviewed and they were uh, presenting their manifesto saying what they do. The same thing should be done across the decision and people should be given the right, every, every Nigerian um, who is qualified has a constitutional right to contest, any, contest. And if you prefer any candidate, fine. You, when it is time to vote, you support the person with your vote. That's the best you can do, not to begin to order arrest. It's, it's not a military government. All right, let's see what we have in front of the Daily Trust the newspaper this morning. Uh, the banner headline in front of Delhi Trust, uh, Education Ministry, uh, Supreme Court, uh, 50 orders, high corruption rigs. This is coming from ICPC. We have riders there, 131 MDAs, fail ethics, integrity compliance. Lottery fund, environment, state house among top five. Assessment targeted at uh, boosting transparency in government. This is coming from the commission. Report shows failure of criminal justice system as part. Elections of phase cancellation, postponement over insecurity, INEC. Two killed as European nation agitators, police clash in Lagos. Nigeria records 170.2 trillion naira worth of foreign trade in five years. Yauri girls, parents resort to crowdfunding to raise 100 million naira ransom. Herbalist arrested for impregnating women in Kanu. Arrested kick as FCTA moves to reintroduce pack and pay. A new Nigeria possible under me, Kwankwaso. Uh, inaugurates campaign council launches fund raising portal. All right. Uh, these are the stories um, in front page of the Daily Trust newspaper this morning. So um, let's talk about uh, uh, this parent resorting to crowdfunding to raise 100 million naira ransom. The Yori girls that were adopted. It's still part of the uh, security challenge that we are talking about. Mm. It's becoming, the thing is becoming more complex on daily basis with uh, uh, hoodlums and criminals now beginning to introduce um, optional methods of uh, kidnapping people and then demanding for money and ransom. So it still boils down to the same problem. If the security uh, system is adjusted and proper to test uh, right people are in the right place and things are properly done, some of these issues will not come up. Uh, and, yes. are, I mean, uh, and now for parents to so go ahead to look for how to raise money uh, to bring out their children uh, from that, the hands of these uh, bandits. That has become the order of the day. When um, the government does not do anything, and not much is happening, then the people who are directly involved, whose relations are being held, now begin to run Elta Skelter and begin to move around to raise money, to pay ransom in order to secure the lives of their others. So when the citizens and indigents have now taken over the security of lives and property, so what is the government doing? People in the government house, what are they doing there? Is it to sit down and drink tea and look around? It's embarrassing. 
Okay, what do well, you also... I thank God that it's not the case in Anambra State. Hmm. What do you also make of the report from ICPC saying that the Education Ministry, Supreme Court, and 50 others are high corruption, <laughs> others are high, on high corruption risk? They also named uh, MDAs and other uh, agencies. Uh, the issue of corruption, which has been there, is still lingering and is now becoming a more or less a habitual uh, issue. Everybody, if you now come into any place you want to do something, uh, if you don't pay or settle one or two persons, then you might, what you have come to do might be strangled. And if there are in cases where documentary uh, issues are involved, then some of the files will begin to get lost. And where there is, where is, is it likely that armed robbers will come to steal files? What are they doing with it? All right, uh, the next paper this morning is the Garden newspaper. Uh, the Garden newspaper has this as the big story there. Private sector frets over federal government's 2.43 trillion naira non-oil revenue target. Experts decry increasing taxes amid widening poverty. Call for plugging of revenue leakages. Explore property taxes, Yusuf urges government. Six victims of a dot train attack rescued as police nabbed two more suspects. INEC denies releasing new final list of candidates. Election rigas behind plot to remove Yakubu, IPAC alleges. One killed, policemen injured, vehicles burnt as police, Yoruba nation activists clash in Ojota. Nigeria a lot amid concern over new COVID-19 variants. NLC berates a presidential candidate for supporting petrol subsidy removal. Okay, uh, let's um, start with the banner headline. The private sector's threaten over federal government's 2.43 trillion naira non-oil revenue targets. And now they are crying uh, that uh, taxes are, widening, are getting too much despite <laughs> the widening poverty rate in the country. They're also calling for a way to see how this can be reduced because it's affecting their businesses. Yeah, but uh, um, yeah, it may be affecting their businesses and um, well, they have the right to, comp uh, to complain if they have a true evidence of unnecessary multiple taxation. Mm -hmm. But where that is not the case, then people now have to know that they have the truth is that uh, in the country, in this country, a lot of people don't, a lot of people as much as possible try to avoid paying taxes. Sure. A lot of, as much as possible. But that again is a major source, is, an, is another source for government, uh, that enables government to fund um, activities, the securities, the rest, uh, provision of securities, provision of social uh, amenities, good roads, this and that and that. Fine. The issue, the, the, where they now have the right to complain is if, where it is there is a, a obvious duplication. But if that is not the case then, because when the taxes are paid, when they finish paying all these taxes, they reflect it in the prices of their goods and services. And that is also, uh, that is also uh, an indirect way of increasing inflation. Hmm. Because prices go up, people now need, uh, need uh, more, more quantities of money to purchase the same uh, goods or service and that affects everybody so if that if when that is well, unless where they have cases of obvious uh, unjustified uh, taxes otherwise and in the, every individual should be able to pay their taxes because in nigeria the truth is that nigerians don't like paying taxes that is the correct uh, this thing. but at the slightest opportunity they will increase the prices of goods and services trying to make more profit. So how about the government? Yet you come back and begin to complain that Nugu uh, Anicha Road has not been tired or has been, one portion of it has been tired for over eight years. The other side is not yet completed and so on. And so where will the money come from? These are some of the sources. Okay, also, um, let's also look at the story of NNC, NLC berating presidential candidates for the 2023 general election uh, <laughs> for, not, for supporting petrol subsidy removal. What's your take on this uh, removal of uh, subsidy? 
the, the issue of subsidy removal is um, it has to be done gradually. The government started it, but the, the only issue, the main, the key issue is that this government is saying that after June, uh, the price of uh, petrol should be deregulated fully. Nigeria, it's not supposed to be like that in Nigeria. Hmm. There is a, an advantage that the citizens are supposed to get from what they produce. Uh, the prices of fuel in Nigeria should not be the same with those who are importing crude oil. Mm. Hmm? That is the advantage that Nigerians are supposed It's supposed to be a bit cheaper here. Yeah. That's the only advantage we get from being an oil producing country. Then, um, when we, the, the world we, uh, for instance, Japan produces a, a lot of cars. You discover that the prices of cars in Japan are not the same thing, are not the same thing with the price of cars in Nigeria. So, if uh, they say it's fully de deregulated and this and that, it uh, should not be fully commercialized and so on and so forth. Then, the revenue that accrues from oil, the revenue that accrues from other sources and other, how do they benefit the citizens? Mm. What do the citizens gain? from being the sixth largest producer of crude oil. It's not like that. Look at, go to California now. There's some of these people, they produce oil and they have about the same population that we do. Hmm. Check now, their prices is not the same thing with that of non-oil non producing countries. So why should our own be different? It's part of the corruption that is still be developing. But instead of uh, Budgeting the reason and nobody will know whether because uh, yesterday I mean 320 naira as a price of uh, fuel mm. uh, within our nature exists. I don't know about all that, is. but between all kinds of nature, that's the av on the average 320. Uh, others might be some are selling 310, but you know, it's not so. What do we benefit? The com what is the, what there's in economics, there's what the, is known as comparative advantage. Mm -hmm. the, you are, I'm selling, a, I'm, I'm producing bread, it grows, I produce it fully, then another person comes to import it from me, and then I import maybe um, fuel or anything from that person. The price of bread which is produced here cannot uh, be competing with the price of bread which is exported to another country and vice versa. So there should be some, ten, some advantages that are accrued, supposed to accrue to Nigerians. Where is it? Part of corruption that we are talking about. Let's see uh, the front page of the state newspaper this morning. Buari in Yola converses the support for Tinibu Binani, others APC candidates. And then tells Adamawa people uh, Tinibu Shetima can be trusted to deliver. Urges them to make a history by electing first female governor. PDP mocks ex as a Lagos governor. Um, six m more abducted, eight or train passengers rescued. Okay, we've seen that. And then we have seen the story of INEC raising an alarm and uh, saying that uh, insecurity may force cancellation of election. IPAC accuses governors of using tout to intimidate, open, and destroy campaign materials. Vows to resist the plot to sack INEC boss, court election. And then up there, federal government, a potar quarter refinery to commence partial operation before end of first quarter. Mm. Silver, why I will happily buy fuel for 300 naira. Uh, says kerosene price deregulated beyond government pre purview. Uh, alleged missing 89 trillion naira, CSOs uh, apologized to Mephile over call for his visa ban. Okay, um, Portacot refineries to commence the partial operation before the um, end of first quarter of this year. Uh, well, that's a, that, that, uh, that's a welcome news. But again, we have also had it on a number of times. Hmm. Portacot refinery, the, which are, where, is it, where is this other refinery uh, in the north? Uh, they are going to commence operations. These are fine. If they do, that's okay so that we should stop 
importing fuel because the moment uh, this this one start producing, uh, then Nigerians at least should, uh, the Nigerians should be able to satisfy our internal consumption, mm. and then the rest can be exported because the issue, the problem we are having is a, a Nigerian economy is a dependent economy. Dependency means that when you begin to when you produce what you do not consume and consume what you do not produce, you are not dependent on yourself. So if uh, it is possible to uh, produce the refinery, uh, for the refinery to begin to produce our own fuel consumption, fine. And that will also help the government in beginning to moderate and make sure that Nigerians derive the competitive advantage for being an oil producing country. But like I suggested it many years ago, if this refinery, the, this Portugal refinery is one of the oldest refineries, and if these refineries, uh, the, I think the, there's a, the one in uh, is it, uh, Kaduna, or where, if these refineries can no longer produce and the technology is outdated, then it should be scrapped. There's no point uh, chasing up, uh, chasing the or youth, rehabilitated or, or rehabilitated, and if they could not be re rehabilitated, because as a level to which technology we de degenerate. Mm. The cost of rehab rehabilitating it will even outweigh the cost of getting new ones. Okay. So if that is the case, then you phase them out, scrap them and then uh, let the modular refineries and even these people they are chasing the youth and uh, uh, they are stealing uh, oil, this and that and that, fine. Then you can also get those youth, re reorientate them, educate them and then give them support to begin to produce. Is a way of taking them off the street. All right, next is uh, Delhi Independent uh, this uh, morning. 2023 poll may face cancellation over rising insecurity. INIC uh, disowns supposed final list of candidates for 2023 elections. Uh, with a four month to go, I hope to retire in peace, says Buhari. Uh, 89 trillion naira stamp duty charges. CSOs back down on calls for MFLS sack and arrest. Says earlier calls for sack prosecution based on falsehood. Uh, then a gunman abducts a do customary court president, ex lawmaker. Tinibu Ababio expresses concern over treacherous APC members. Ibiram leaders flee. Ohinoi for allegedly disrespecting Buhari and Bello. Yoruba nation agitators ruffled over killing of member, condemned the security agencies, asked international community to intervene, vowed to intensify efforts on Yoruba nation agitation. Obi Dati campaign team unveils book on Peter Obi business unusual. Okay? Um, <laughs> uh, uh, do we start with the agitation? What is happening in the Yoruba nation agitators uh, killing themselves? Uh, we, we've seen that in almost all the papers we read out this morning. I'm burning of cars mm -hmm. and also killing uh, some of their members. It's, uh, it's surprising now because um, in the first instance, the, 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 the regulation, the rule is that if you want to do any gathering, you have to inform the security agents so that they will be able to provide adequate security with a view to stopping this kind of situation. That is one. Two, I don't know the Yoruba nations. Well, I'm not uh, trying to trample on people's rights because people have the right to protest when they feel their interest is not protected. But the idea of uh, uh, now raising it to the point of uh, where people now begin to confront the security men having confrontations and then deaths begin to arise. It's surprising. And again, um, the, the security personnel that are, uh, that are monitoring all these uh, marchings and all that, I mean, uh, how did it now degenerate to the point that somebody now has to be killed? These are some of the issues. There's need for investigation to find out exactly what happened. And then now apportion the right blame, not apportion the right punishment and blame to the person that is responsible. Uh, just like uh, during the SARS, the end SARS uh, protests and all that, everybody saw it coming, you knew. 
And if, for instance, when they were doing it, that on that particular day, I was moving out of Hoka. And then uh, there's a SAS office somewhere in my local government. Getting closer to it, he discovered that the youth were all over the place, blocking the all this. But when I now came and some of them said that they, they sh I should carry them, I said, okay, enter now. We moved up to a point and then uh, they said they want to drop. I said, I dropped. But this idea of confrontation and uh, shooting sporadic, shooting and all is becoming rampant. Slightest is and then uh, somebody is shot dead. If such, uh, if such attentions are paid, to the origin of the security crisis, which is Boko Haram, then they won't be there, and then probably the security challenges will not be there at all. Yeah. So please, I'm pleading with the security officers to take it easy and know that when people are protesting, and there might, of course, there might be some statement, but as for, there might be some statement they may not like. But most importantly, as much as possible, avoid shootings and that lead to death, and then. Once, once that happens, people will, of course, counter it. And that is where you now begin to have crisis. So please. And then uh, so the security personnel that, are, that handle that should also be investigated and then find out what exactly happened so that the right blames and punishment should be apportioned to deter further or future occurrences. With four months to go, I hope to retire in peace, says Buari. <laughs> Uh, well, anybody who is the noise uh, done mm. uh, should leave and then allow the next person to come in. The, the, the voters are there to decide the next uh, who comes in next. Of course I know he's going to leave, but Marion is saying that he wants to retire in peace. Well, uh, well, that, well maybe he, uh, he needs to explain uh, how he defines peace. Because, uh, yes, there are security challenges in the country, but there is outrightly, there is no obvious war. And uh, uh, everybody in the country wants peace. And he is the person solely in charge because he controls the security. He appoints the chief of uh, all the service chiefs and uh, is in charge of, um, you know, is the commander in chief. So what he says comes to stay. So we wish him a, a peaceful retirement and also he should also be able to hand over a peaceful country. All right. On that note, we want to say a very big thank you to you, uh, Tony, for coming for the press review this morning. Yeah. We appreciate uh, you this morning. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks a lot. And uh, like, let me once more com commend the uh, ABS for holding their services. Even on, uh, the, on the days of um, Southeast Zona holidays, they still do their work. <laughs> uh, because if you come here on Mondays, you see that things are working. So uh, keep, keep the flag flying and uh, God will guide all of us in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much, Tony, for being part of the show this morning. And that's it for Press Review. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks. My name is Chidima Orangwa.